Last piece on uh, the Graham Schmidt method and QR decomposition. There's another piece after this about orthogonal matrices in general, which of course Q is a fantastic example of. Uh, so let's uh, imagine we can do this. We, we can find A equals QR. Right? And we're going to see what this means for AX equals B. Because we love that equation. There's a slight piece in here where we're worried about. Um, so there's a presumption just for this point. Let's, let's do this. Uh, presume... We can modify this, but presume uh, that n equals r, or r equals n, let's write it like that, the rank of the matrix. So let's say that, okay? So we're going to solve the normal equation using a equals qr. So here's our normal equation, which we're enamored with. Yes, we're going to color it in because it's so much fun. So we take ax equals b, and we came to this understanding that if we pre-multiply by A transpose, we are suddenly in a solvable situation. And we will find not necessarily the solution X, but uh, X star, which gives us the best solution to AX equals B, right? It gives us A times X star goes to P, which is B's projection into column space. And that is the best we can do. All right, so the idea is here, B is not an element of the column space of A. That's when we use this. It could be, but that's you know, what we're worried about here. All right, so let's stick A equals QR in. That's what's happening here. So this is QR, here's QR, right? So this is A equals QR, and again here, and then again here, and there's a transpose. All right, so we've just replaced A with QR. We've got transposes, so we know what to do with those, right? So they swap, we swap the order, we take the transposes again. And so that's what happened there. So, yeah, we get an R transpose, Q transpose. And then we just have Q times R. This Q transpose Q has appeared. Again, that's the identity. We'll talk a little bit more about it, but that's quite fantastic. It is a, um, this is M by N, this is M by M. So it's an M by N identity, pretty good. These are M by N, right? So these are square matrices. So lots of square matrices now. And then over here, again, N by N matrix. It's, it's upper triangular, so it becomes lower tri triangular when it's a transpose. Uh, then we have um, N by M and M by one. Right, so this whole thing here is an n by one. And of course this is n by one as well. So it's an, a square matrix problem now. Let's get this last piece. So the identity, we can just absorb it. Now we have R transpose R, right? The Q's have gone away times X star. We've got an R transpose Q transpose over here. Now, there's a sneaky thing here, R is a diagonal as an upper triangular matrix. It's got non-zero things along the diagonal. That means it has um, it's square. It has not, it's full rank, right? So it's square, square, full rank, all pivots, all n pivots exist. Right, there's a greater than zero. So we can find the inverse for it in principle, theoretically. So we can pre we can undo it, we can pre-multiply by the inverse here. So RT minus one. We're going to pre-multiply both of them, so it strips it off the front, and we just end up with this result, which we will put into a box here. Right, so the upper triangular matrix R times X is Q transpose B. This is pretty good. So if you have an AX equals B problem and you know A is QR, you can immediately rewrite it in this way. And why is that good? Because uh, R is an upper triangular system. It's upper triangular. It's 
easy to solve. It's a triangular system. Mm -hmm. And we just multiply it. We find the, this kind of modified B on the right-hand side, right? So this is of the form A x equals B. Let's just put these things in here. There's some, some blob, some square matrix, blah, blah, blah. So it's all good, right? This is an M by one. Uh, so that's all, all very good. Now, it's the normal equation. So we're happy with that. We could also just not worry about the normal equation. Let's just start with AX equals B. So here's a little sort of a, maybe potentially confusing issue, right? So AX equals B. So we're gonna do the same thing, replace A with uh, QR. It's just AX equals B, not, not the complications with the normal equation. Uh, we can pre-multiply by Q transpose. So let me indicate that with a different color, All right? Pre-multiply both sides. Now Q might not be square, so it's not necessarily uh, an inverse, but it's a left inverse, right? So this is a left inverse of Q. Very simple, just the transpose, right? So all of these dot products work to give us an identity matrix. This is again an N by N matrix. So we've kind of used a, a partial inverse sort of idea and we've gotten back to this equation, right? So we're back, we're back to what we found for the normal equation, but here's this problem. It's kind of weird, but we seem to have solved the problem for X in general, but we know that's not, and this is an upper triangular system. It's not the same thing, right? So we've got RX star equals QTB over here, right? We've got this one and now we've got this one, but they're, they're, they're different things. So what's, what's going on? And it turns out we are really solving the normal equation, right? Because, and, and so we'll explain it because Q transpose, I just like doing this. Could be a better way, but there you go. Um, yeah, Q transpose B is Q transpose P, right? B is the, this is the projected, right? Projection of B onto the column space of A. So let's look at what's happening. On the right hand side, we've got Q transpose, this should be a T there. So this is Q transpose B, right? So the Qs are now um, sitting there in rows. The Qs span the column space of A, right? They're, they're just, it's another, we had the A's, they span the column space of A, and then we made this new basis very nice, it's an orthogonal basis for the column space of A. And um, <clears throat> right, and so what's going on is this. Let's do it like this. So we've got Q transpose B. That's just an extra piece here about the projection thing. Q transpose B. Well, B is P plus E, right? So there's a part that lives in column space and a part that lives in left null space. The big deal is that Q transpose E has to be zero, right? Because the Q vectors are in column space, E is in left null space. So that's what this is, right? So we're left with Q transpose B is equal to just Q transpose P. So we're really actually solving the normal equation because the Q transpose comes in and it gets rid of all of the E part, right? So you can write it down different ways, but this is actually the, the, the right, I mean, you, you can derive these things separately, right? So we could sort of start here and just go down this way. We could start with a normal equation and go down to here. The normal equation is the way to start because we, we, see, the, we see we've kind of missed something here, actually. Um, we've missed that in fact, 
we're really solving x star. So this is really, okay, so this is not, so let me annotate that to a, right? So this is really uh, r x star. There's only one equation, right? We can't have both. Okay. All right? It's a good thing. 